Hello, I'm Jerome Goddard from Mississippi State. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you today. I want to talk to you about various ways you might communicate scientific or entomological knowledge to the public. All sorts of ways scientists can get their message across to the public and lay people. These are just a few I've thought of. Of course, there's the Extension Service through land-grant universities legal matters where you're a consultant or a witness, media interviews, be it TV or newspaper or whatever, magazine, television and documentaries, and of course book writing for the scientific community as well as for the public, maybe even fiction. As many of you know, the Extension Service is specifically designed to extend knowledge to the public. This, is th this concept started a long time ago, at least a hundred years ago, where the county agents went out to the farmers, people like that, home economists went, taught people how to uh, do things around the house more efficiently. Uh, county agents helped the farmers know how to fight the pests do various things like that. Today, the Extension Service is still that way. It's a little bit more diverse now and in its mission, but it still has the same basic components. There are Extension faculty at every one of these land-grant universities who are in entomology, plant pathology, forestry, poultry, various different disciplines, and they write publications for the public. They provide consultation by phone or email or in person. They set up demonstrations in fields or, lab or laboratory type things where people can see the results. And they go around giving speeches at garden clubs, and Kiwanis clubs, pilot clubs, things like that. Very important component in the university system is extension. Legal matters. This means forensic entomology, and I don't mean here estimating the time of death, although that certainly is forensic entomology, but I just mean anything legal pertaining to entomology. That might be termite problems, food pests, neglect cases, etc., etc., where an entomologist is asked to be an expert witness or a consultant on either side. And this certainly educates the public because the people see these cases and see what the entomologist has to say. For example, the Anthony Cayley case in Florida, there was a forensic entomology report provided, and you can get it freely online. Let me just take a little side road here and talk about legal cases. If you do this at all, in any capacity, you need to ver be very careful how you do that. Make good notes, keep good records, use a bound log book, not, not the loose leaf kind, ones with numbered pages, write with a pen, put down everything, who, what, when, and where, keep any specimens that are sent to you for a long time, at least two or three years, because some of these cases, the statutes and limitations are three years. Keep it because somebody, some lawyer is going to call you and say, I need the Johnson files or something like that. and have to have it. Stay within your own expertise. If you're a fly expert, don't try to answer questions about beetles. If you're a, a flea expert and they ask you about some kind of bites on somebody's hand, you better say, I'm not a, I'm not a biteologist. I'm not a dermatologist. I'm a fleaologist. So you need to stay within your own expertise or they will eat you alive. Media interviews. You know, this could be all kind of stuff. I get calls from local TV. I get calls from newspapers. I get calls from magazines. And sometimes it's legitimate. Sometimes it's uh, really a good thing. Sometimes it's, it's not. Sometimes it's over-sensationalized, politically charged, and they're just wanting some kind of little sound bites. For example, I was asked recently about uh, genetically modified uh, mosquitoes being released and I talked to the public relations people and they said no way stay out of it and I agreed 
GMO is such a touchy topic right now, and, and unless you're doing research on that, unless you're an expert on that, I say stay out of it. Because they will very often ambu ambush you. I've been ambushed several times by reporters. I've had reporters call me and act like they were a citizen and asking a question about a pesticide or a, a product or a procedure or even a policy of the health department or Mississippi State University and then at the end said thank you I'm Ms. Ms. whoever from the WKRG news so they they will certainly ambush you I've also been ambushed one time where the guy said uh, tell me about Mr. so-and-so off the record and I I did I said but now when you turn that camera on don't ask me that question I'm not going to answer it because it's political or whatever and he said oh no we won't do that as soon as they turn the camera on that's the question he asked so then if you start all this business I can neither confirm nor deny it just makes you look like a buffoon you know every institution health department government agency USDA whatever university they have public relations people I would strongly urge you to use your public relations people get to know them invite them to be there in these especially high politically charged interviews get them to be there with you get them to to instruct you teach you how to do this they aren't your enemy the PR people are not your enemy they can help you tremendously television documentaries uh, television shows documentaries etc I've, I've been involved in some of these in my career National Geographic the Learning Channel things like that uh, several times I've done this what happens is if they have a show or a series they contract with somebody else to do the filming uh, the ones I've been the ones I've dealt with some out of New York City Pangolin films one out of England Channel 4 uh, scientific films they contract with them to produce the show for them then they show it on the Learning Channel or National Geographic or whoever so these people come and visit you they may stay a few days it might stay a week it might stay a month and they uh, film these segments over and over and over they um, they're nice they usually don't have some kind of agenda but this is your opportunity to have in your mind okay this is the message I want to portray to the public and have it in your mind this is what I want to say no matter what they tell you to say it's okay to get your points in and say your part. The Weather Channel, more and more, the Weather Channel is not about weather. Uh, three times in my career I've been asked for Skype interviews by the Weather Channel, two times about West Nile virus related issues, and one time about alligators. I have no idea why. They asked me, was the hot weather hurting the alligators? And I said, I'm not an alligator person. You need to call somebody else. So these people, especially with Skype, anybody can call you anytime and say, can you go on the news tonight at 6 o'clock? Again, work closely with your PR people. You don't have to work with the PR people, but you'd be foolish not to. Call them, check with them, say, you know, so-and-so's asked me to appear, so-and-so's asked me to speak about this, what do you think? How could this, how could this be good or bad? How might this get me in trouble? and they're really wise about that stay within what you know I'll tell this little story it happened to me uh, you know survivor the show survivor well oh, about the third season they were in somewhere in the South Pacific off somewhere near Fiji I think and uh, the CBS morning news people I think it was Katie Couric and Brian or well, maybe it wasn't Katie Couric she might have been NBC but it was whoever that was, Diane, no, not Diane Sawyer, I'm sorry, but it was one of those. It was big. And they said, can you appear this Wednesday speaking about the no-no bug? They say the no-no bug's affected the people on the filming of Survivor. Can you come speak about that? We'll also promote the show a little bit. And I said, well, I'll be glad to talk about that. I think it's a Ceratopagonid midge. I said, but I got to know for sure because common names will get you in trouble. I said, I don't know for sure what the no no bug is. Well, they thought I was crazy, but they said, well, don't you know? I said, I think I know what the no no bug is, but common names vary all over the world. 
So they say, well, we'll we'll find somebody that will send you some by FedEx before you come or some professor who can tell you they saw them and this is what I said. That'd be fine. Well, it comes down to like the day before, and they still not confirmed to me what the no-no bug was. I hadn't seen the no-no bug. Nobody's called me about the no-no bug. And so I called them. It was a hard decision to make because I obviously wanted to do this this appearance, and I said I cannot appear on television and talk about a bug unless I am 100% sure of the identification of it. And they didn't like it, but that's just the way it is. If I had made that, if I had done that appearance, and then it turns out the no-no bug was a some sort of pygmy grasshopper or who knows what, I would have just looked like an idiot. Books. You can write books. You don't even have to be very good at it. I'm not. You can write books. You can write books in your field. You can write textbooks for colleges or high schools. You can write reference books. There's a difference between a reference book and a school textbook. They rarely are the same. Sometimes they're the same. Sometimes a reference book is used as a textbook, but they're really not the same. You can write children's books. And I've done a little bit of all of this, and some of my books have been very successful. Many of them have not. And so... This is a great way to say, okay, what is the message I want to portray? What what are some things I want to say to the public about insects, arachnids, whatever? And this is your chance. Weave it into your stories. Weave it into your your chapters. Now, you can even do uh, fiction books. I've written a lot of fiction books. Some of them aren't, aren't any good, but I've written them. And did you know they can get reviewed even by scientific magazines or journals like Science. The journal Science reviews fiction occasionally if it has a science theme. Scientific American and some of the others certainly will do that. And a lot of the movies these days, Inception and things like that, um, have scientific uh, themes or a basis about them. So you can do that. I encourage you to do that. Some tips and advice. Try not to use a bunch of jargon. Try not to use a bunch of big words. I know I oversimplify way too much. But try not to speak over the head of of your listeners. Try to explain your research, your, your understanding of your science in easily understandable language as much as you can. Always try as best you can to have two or three points you want to make. I have in my mind what I want to say, and I don't care what they say to me. I'm going to get my two or three points in there. That's what happened to me when I appeared on Colbert Report. I had in my mind two or three things I wanted to say, and I, he's just going everywhere. He's talking about everything. And I'd try to find a place and a way to say those points so that when it was over, I felt like I had conveyed the three points I wanted to convey. You have to be excited. You have to be enthusiastic. You can't just sit there and say, now here is the necrosis of the parenchyma. It needs to be exciting. It needs to be enthusiastic and people catch on. I would also end by saying certainly don't don't taint your reputation by being too cozy with industry. Don't go corporate. It, it hurts you. It hurts your, your at least a perception of your integrity. And I know this is very difficult in all of uh, what we do. We get grant money from different sources, sometimes private. And we just have to be open and honest and disclose our financial conflicts of interest. And if we're not, uh, people think you've sold out to industry. And people think it's just a paid advertisement. So uh, be careful about that. Watch out for that. Maintain your objectivity. Maintain your integrity. Here's my contact information. You can anytime ask me a question by email or on my blog site, JeromeGoddard.com. There on the right, you can see my official Mississippi State University photograph, which they're very proud of. But thank you for this opportunity to let me speak to you today. And I'm sorry again that I was not there to deliver it and answer questions. Thank you very much.